so now we're moving on to hydrogenation as a reaction of triacylglycerols. Keep in mind, it's been a while, but you've seen a hydrogenation reaction before. This is where we have a double bond and we convert the double bond to a single bond. So an alkene to an alkane using the addition of hydrogen. So now we're gonna see how this is applied to a triacylglycerol. All right, so as we said, a hydrogenation reaction is going to convert double bonds, carbon-carbon double bonds, into single bonds. So we're going from an alkene to an alkane. Uh, this does require a nickel catalyst in order to happen. So we've seen this in very simple alkene structures where we break the double bond and we add a hydrogen onto each of the carbons that was involved in the double bond. Well, triacylglycerols, you can do the exact same thing to it. Um, so if you have any double bonds in your fatty acid chain portion or your nonpolar portion of your triacylglycerol, you can add in hydrogens and break all of those double bonds. You're probably asking yourself, why? Why would you want to go and mess with these? So we do this in food chemistry. So a tri, I'm sorry, a triacylglycerol that has double bonds, if you remember back to last unit, that's going to be a triacylglycerol that you find in a liquid oil, so liquid at room temperature. So adding double bonds makes something more liquidy. So think of your olive oils, your um, safflower oil, your vegetable oil, all of those oils that are liquid at room temperature. Well, this is nice and all, but think of something like peanut butter. Peanut oil tends to be liquid. Like if you get one of those um, organic peanut butters at the store, it tends to be separated. You have a solid peanut butter portion, then you have that thick layer of oil on top. Well, what peanut butter companies and all food companies have started doing is they will partially hydrogenate or fully hydrogenate those oils so that they don't separate out. So those oils that were healthy for you have been hydrogenated and converted to uh, single bonds so that they're more solid at room temperature so you don't have that separation so it's actually for the consumer's sake um, and for the appearance that they hydrogenate that all right back to my point back to my reaction so here we have a triacylglycerol. We have our three ester bonds. And for this reaction, we're not even going to touch those. What we are concerned with are these three double bonds. So looking at the reaction, we get a little bit of a hint. We know that we are going to fully hydrogenate the three double bonds that are on here because we are given three H2s to work with. So remembering back to chapter 13, when we had a double bond and we don't care what's attached to this, we are going to break one of those bonds, converting it to an alkane, and we're gonna add a hydrogen on each of those positions. So that's essentially what we're doing, but we're gonna add a hydrogen here and here and here, which is why we need six total hydrogens. So looking over here at our final product, um, this, carbon-hydrogen that was involved in the double bond becomes a CH2, as does this one, and there's no longer a double bond. So I have a total of seven here, eight, nine, plus seven is 16. I have 16 total carbon-carbon single bonds now. And each of these chains was the same, so I wind up with the same thing for each of my triacylglycerols. So when you think hydrogenation, think going from a double bond to a single bond and think about changing those physical properties in that fat too. So we're going from something that had probably a cis double bond and would have been kinked and liquid at room temperature to something that is now a single bond, can pack tightly, it's going to be solid at room temperature now. All right, let's do this reaction together. So i um, not gonna touch my ester bond, I'm going to, at least start out with this drawn um, with the same backbone and the same ester bonds as before, because I know that this hydrogenation is only going to affect these three double bonds. I'm gonna convert those from double bonds to single bonds. So starting out with my glycerol backbone, CH2O, I just like to draw that first and then worry about the carbonyls and everything else that we have going on. All right, give myself some space. Now it's time for the carbonyl. All right, so.
So we're going to have to do a little bit of work on thinking through what this is going to look like because we're no longer going to have that double bond. So we're going to have to adjust our subscript on here. So let's just work with this one. If we were to break that double bond and add hydrogens in its place, this is what it would look like. So we would have 10 CH2s. This is 11, 12 plus another 7 is 19. So now this would be CH2 with a subscript of 19, and then we would cap that with a CH3 because it's the end. And looking at our subscripts, just double check, these are identical. This is a simple triacylglycerol. So we have three of the same chains, which makes my life easier. I can just copy that work that I did on the bottom. So if you do it right the first time, you make your life a lot easier. All right, so we went from having an unsaturated triacylglycerol liquid at room temperature to having a saturated triacylglycerol, most likely solid at room temperature. All right, guys, I'm throwing you into the deep end. This is coming out of your guided practice as well, and I want to give you guys a challenge now that you've seen me do this a couple times. <sighs> Take a look at this. I'm going to give you a hint right now. There are nine H2s that you're going to have to deal with. So be sure that you're looking at subscripts and figuring out what this is going to look like. And it may take drawing this out as it's written and not with the subscripts to figure out what you're working with. All right. Pause me. Good luck. Did you remember to pause me? Did you try this problem on your own? Did you? Um, if you did and you got this 27. CH2s for a total of a chain length of, good Lord, 29 carbons and hydrogens. Congratulations. So you, each of these molecules had three carbon-carbon double bonds, had three of those. So you would have added three H2s for a total of nine hydrogens to each of these chains, giving you what was an unsaturated triacylglycerol to now a saturated triacylglycerol.